everybody, and welcome once again to the MEMSPA Minutes. I am Mike Domagowski, principal and proud president of the Michigan Elementary and Middle School Principals Association. You see I have an, a wonderful guest, Tom Murray, here with me today. Um, the MEMSPA Minutes posts at 8.30 on Twitter on hashtag MEMSPA chat, 8.30 every Thursday, so please check it out. But once again, I am humbled to have Tom Murray, our keynote speaker at our 2022 MEMSPA Annual Conference, here to talk a little bit about who Tom Murray is, a little bit about how that connection with MEMSPA goes, and a little bit about educational leadership as well. So welcome, Tom. Glad to have you aboard. What's up, Mike? And I just figured maybe you just ran out of people to ask, and I was kind of the, the <laughs> last one to be able to ask. No, just kidding. It's such an honor to be with you here today, and I can't wait for the conference. Looking forward to it. Awesome. You know, and, and we got a little bit of time before the conference. So for the people that are listening or watching this uh, program, uh, make sure you're registered. You can just go to memspa.org and register. We're going to see Tom on, I believe, December 8th. You are kicking off the conference and we're really excited to have you on. So uh, Tom, can you get, can you uh, tell everybody just a little bit about yourself? So for those people that maybe don't know you. Sure. Well, for this group, I'm a former elementary principal, former middle school principal. I like to actually say like recovering middle school, recovering elementary principal, right? Today I get to work nationally. I help lead future ready schools, uh, digital learning day. So I get to work with principals, superintendents, and just school and district leaders all across the country. And so as a former school and district level admin, I have great appreciation for the work that you all do as principals each and every day, kind of have the scars to prove it and know those feelings. But I also know it's one of the most rewarding jobs in the world. One of the greatest jobs in the world. But I finally, I also recognize the chaos that everybody is up against right now. And so my job right now is supporting people around the great around our country, doing the great work that they're doing, amplifying some of those stories, spotlighting some of the innovative practices, things that are happening, but also hopefully encourage and inspire a little bit too, because let's recognize it, it's not easy right now. And so uh, I'm also a dad, I'm a dad of two little ones. And so the work that I do, uh, one's in middle school, one's in elementary school. And so I just try and see through their lens and their eyes, what is it, what the type of experiences that I want them to have as a dad? And then how can I support principals and teachers across the country and replicating and creating those types of experiences for kids? Awesome. Awesome. And you know, you talked a lot about uh, innovative practices and I know you've done tons in the past. Uh, I know you've worked with uh, U.S. Congress and you've worked with the U.S. Department of Education and state departments, um, future ready schools and digital learning days. Can you talk about a little bit of that work in the past and how it pertains to principalship or educational leadership? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I have to laugh because I think you just said innovation in Congress in the same sentence. And I'm not <laughs> sure I'm not sure those things, two words have ever been put together in that yeah, regard, right? You. Yeah, no, in my work at All for Ed, so the Alliance for Excellent Education is a bipartisan nonprofit group out of Washington, D.C. I got recruited there just before Future Ready began a number of years ago um, out of being a district level leader at the time in my district in Pennsylvania. And so we'll work all, across Congress, the Senate. Right now, the work that we're doing is we're really an equity focused organization. So part of the work with Congress and the Senate is really working to help appropriate the, uh, the appropriate amount of funds uh, that schools need. So we've recently worked um, along the FCC, uh, alongside the FCC for things like the connectivity, the funding that's coming to your districts um, through the American Rescue Plan, through the ECF, uh, those types of funding. We'll work on that kind of on the back end, really supporting what school and district le uh, leaders need. Also trying to help remove some of the red tape because I've been there. I know the red tape that often gets in the way. And so really just helping to get the, the needed funds and resources. So part of it's that, that policy side, that federal policy side. But I'll be honest, it's not my passion. I mean, yes, I want to get rid of some of that red tape and get the funds to folks and help support that on the back end, some of it behind the scenes. But helping to lead future ready schools really is my passion because the work we do, bipartisan nonprofit, we work to, to raise money to support school leaders, support principals. Uh, there's a lot of practitioners that, that are helping to lead the way as our advisors, provide ongoing professional learning, webinars, content. Um, we often partner with great groups like MEMSPA. We're not there to be competitive. We're not trying to take anybody's PD by any means, but really just because we recognize the support that's needed from coast to coast or out there. And so I help to lead the district leadership strand, work with superintendents curriculum directors, those folks all the time on everything from, we call it the Future Ready Framework, really those big bucket areas uh, that we're working towards transformation, whether it's curriculum instruction, assessment, personalized professional learning, the robust infrastructure, the data privacy side, or learning spaces, use of space and time, community partnerships, lots of the different big buckets that, that principals are helping to lead through. And so we're working to compile, curate resources, tools, and those kinds of things, as well as um, different types of events, whether they're virtual, they've been in person prior to COVID, we'll 
we'll get back to that eventually, really to use as launch points. We don't look at things as come to one thing one time and check it off the box and we're done. We look at to really this ongoing process of transformation just to support the great work that schools and districts are already doing, amplify that, but at the same time, Let's keep, uh, let's stay humble and recognize there's always room for growth. There's always things we can do better for the kids that we serve. Being equity focused, we focus a lot on things around connectivity, opportunities, helping to break down some of those systemic barriers that have, have been long been had in education and being able to work through that. So um, it's kind of what I do in my day job. Um, besides that, I get to take a lot of vacation to be able to go and do things like conferences and be able to speak around some of my, my last book, my latest book. So my last book was Personal and Authentic, Designing Learning Experiences to Impact a Lifetime, Learning Transformed, Eight Keys to Designing Tomorrow's Schools Today was the one with ACD, ASCD and uh, co-written with Eric Schenninger before that. So I don't have a whole lot of free time besides those pieces, but that's uh, a little bit about me and the work that I do. It doesn't sound like you have any free time at all. So you rattle through those things. And if I was a, a, a really good note taker, I would be literally filling the page up. So kudos to you and all those things. You know, something stuck out. There's two things that stuck out to me. The one thing, and uh, I want to mention this for our MEMSPA listeners, is that you mentioned things that go right along with our strategic plan. So we have four pillars right now in our strategic plan that talks about professional development. You mentioned that. You talk, uh, I, one, another pillar we talk about is strengthening MEMSPA, like just strengthening the profession, strengthening our association. You mentioned things like that. You mentioned some bipartisan work that you're doing, especially with legislation. Um, we have an advocacy piece as the third pillar. And the fourth pillar is diversity, equity, inclusion. I mean, so really those four pillars that we're working on with MEMSPA, you nailed as part of your work that you do on a consistent day-to-day -day basis. So I really appreciate that. That is amazing. The second piece I wanted to mention, Tom, which I was really happy to hear is future ready framework. I, I, I want to hear a little bit more about that. Like what is that and the transformation and really going right along with the books that you've written? I, I believe, have you written two books? I, well, I, Probably a lot more, right? <laughs> There's others I've been a part of, but two main ones. Yeah. Because I, I you know, I, I went through the bio on your webpage and we, we, you know, I found out the information about U.S. Congress. I found out the information about, um, you know, the, the future ready frameworks, things like that. There's a ton of information on your website. So people uh, that are listening and watching, please check that out. But I'd love to hear that. I mean, we have only connected a little bit um, through Twitter, uh, MEMSPA chat. I know you, you hosted a MEMSPA chat for us last year. Um, so really talk, talk to us more about the future ready framework and what that's all about. Yeah, absolutely. So a number of years ago, we did a lot of research in terms of like, what are the true big bucket areas? We call them gears. It's a, it's kind of a wheel. If you go to futureready.org slash framework, you can check it out. But what are the big bucket areas of transformation as we need to like continue to move things forward? There, there's a, so much at play here. And obviously COVID just layers everything on top of it. But for so long, districts have been spending a lot of money in a lot of different areas. And if we're totally honest, like what's working and What's a graveyard in like some technology in the back of some closet somewhere that at the end of the day probably wasn't really worth the money. So we really started from a research base looking at some of the most successful schools when we take a look at what what are the big bucket areas of transformation? And so I started to go through them earlier, your curriculum instruction assessment, your teaching and learning side, how do we shift that forward? What's our future ready vision for students? Where do we, what do we wanna see teaching and learning look like in our schools five years from now? How do we really equip them for the world of work or whatever it is they choose to after graduation? That notion of personalized professional learning, we actually use professional learning, not professional development from a research end. If you look at the phrase professional development, I'm not mad all the districts out that use it. When people hear it, you know what they think of? They think of one size fits all, sit and get, hours-based accountability, things that are done to them. And what do we know that work, doesn't work? Uh, that, right? And so we use learning because it's really the heart and soul of what we do. And so some might call it semantics. I call, you know, I, I've never heard somebody be, get up in the morning. And they're like, I can't wait to be developed today, right? And so we use that gear as really that's the conduit, the vehicle to make the transformation happen, right? You can't just throw money at a problem. It, it doesn't, you need that professional learning, that growth aspect to happen, right? Um, budget and resources is another gear that's around sustainability. I'll tell you right now, one of my largest fears in education, looking three years down the pipe, districts are being infused with this federal funding, the ECF funding that just came out recently, all this funding, and they need it, and we'll take it. But one of my biggest fears is three years from now, we're going to have one of the largest fiscal cliffs in our districts if we're not really intentional and careful about it. Because we, if we're just plugging holes left and right, and let's face it, we've got holes in our budgets and these things, that's a reality. But if we're not really focused on sustainability, if we're buying lots of stuff that's going to have to be replaced three or four years from now, what can become the norm in three years, the bottom can fall out when we can't go replace things, right? Yeah. I'm thinking about technology and a lot of that kind of stuff. And so the gear there is really focused on, if I could do it in one word, it would be sustainability. 
stability? How do we make sure the decisions we're making today are fiscally stable moving forward at a time where funding is often in flux? And that's just the reality, not just in Michigan, but in every state across the country in different ways. Another one's around um, community partnerships. How do we engage our businesses, our places of work, worship? How do we brand our schools? How do we truly engage with parents, not just kind of one directional, I send newsletters out, but what does that look like in terms of being able to do that? Incredible work, by the way, happening in these areas across the country. None of this comes from a deficit mindset by any means. It comes from recognized places. People are doing amazing things happening here across the country. We start breaking down some barriers. Um, other ones being data and privacy. Uh, you mentioned Congress. I had the opportunity to testify in front of Congress a number of years ago. You know, something like student data privacy, it's not going away. And the more and more digital stuff we do, the more in tune with like those things we got to we got to really process because it really comes down to trust. You've been doing amazing things in your school, in your district, but we mess up one thing one time, <laughs> we yeah. shatter trust in our community. And it doesn't really matter how great you're doing over here. You shatter trust. Parents don't trust you. We're in a roof for a real long haul that can take years and years to fix. Uh, robust infrastructure since the pandemic has really been front and center. You know, it's really interesting to me. I remember I was standing in Wyoming working with the school district on March 13th, that Friday, we can all remember it before the pandemic hit. And, you know, everybody started that following week. We instantly reprioritized so many things. Like nobody, when the pandemic hit, was worried about like, what about the spelling test next Wednesday? Nobody cared about that, right? right. It was right. like, are kids safe? Do they have food? Do we know how to communicate? But the other thing that came front and center was connectivity and kids without access. And it's so much of the work we've been doing for six years at Future Ready Schools, recognizing disproportionately it's our black and brown kids that don't have connectivity. Our, we released at Future Ready the first ever report uh, last summer as the pandemic was really full throttle last summer. It was about 16.9 million children in our country didn't have the connectivity. Here's why I bring all that up is because why did it take a pandemic to make that front and center on somebody's radar when 70% of our teachers were asking kids to do something digital outside of school and 16.9 million children couldn't? That's a case where the pandemic has shifted our lens a little bit where that's really become a non-negotiable. And so when we talk about infrastructure and those pieces, uh, we talk about being an equity focused organization, that's some of the work that we do. Other ones real quick, looking at the use of space of time, learning spaces. No, we're not talking about being pretty for Pinterest. We're talking about how design impacts the brain and learning and ways that we can do those types of things in classrooms to support learning, how we use time. I mean, I know we're all sick of the word like asynchronous because of the pandemic, but it really is how do we use time differently with the, because time is really the one constant. We can't make any more of it. It's the one constant that we have in education, um, but how we use it can certainly be different. And the outside being collaborative leadership, inclusive culture. And I know when we connect at the conference, uh, it's something I'll be talking about to the leaders around the culture that they create, their own leadership and, and their lens and whatnot. But the framework is really a support. And I encourage you to go to futureready.org slash framework. There's literally like four or 500 resources all for free throughout those gear areas that I quickly mentioned that I encourage you to check out. Awesome. And I, you know, I just shouted down several gear uh, gears that you talked about, and I'm excited to hear about that, especially of course, that last one, which you said you'd mentioned at the MEMSP annual conference, that collaboration, leadership and culture. Um, so futureready.org slash framework, correct? That's how you can get to the framework part of it. Yeah, but all the, let's go to futureready.org. You can check out some of the events, webinars, uh, those kinds of things. We do all those things for free. Encourage you to check that out if you're looking for some other professional learning in some specific areas. Okay, great. Just uh, focused on the MEMS Annual Conference, December 8th. You're going to be there. I'm excited to meet you in person. I've talked to you several times virtually or through social media. Um, so not to give everything anything away, but give me like one or two quick hitters about what we ex expect from Thomas Murray. My, one of my biggest hopes in recognizing where principals are right now is I want them leaving the keynote feeling like they could run through that wall back to their kids. That's, that's one of my biggest hope. Fired up because I recognize it is hard. They're getting hit left and right. There's so much on their plates, so much on their to do. There's so many, there's so much nonsense they're dealing with that this conference is such an amazing opportunity to come together with amazing people throughout the state of Michigan that are doing very similar work to them that get it, that understand their trials, that understand the heartache, that understand what they're going through to really be rejuvenated. And so I really hope that I'm a piece of that because I know that's the overall conference itself. And I get to be a, a piece of that. I want them leaving inspired and encouraged. I also want them leaving with some key pieces that they can take. I want to be really practical. We're doing a breakout session called Leading with Purpose, I believe for about 90 minutes after the or 75 or 90 minutes after the keynote, where I'm going to model to them some things they can turn around and use with their staff, some quick activities, quick hitters, quick culture builders that they can do, but also really serve a purpose around what we do around 
with as leaders around communication, around modeling, and around those kinds of things. But hopefully, it's really practical in nature as well. I couldn't be any more excited to come out, hang out. Principals are some of my favorite groups to work with as a former middle school and elementary principal myself, because I know there's going to be amazing people there that like to have lots of fun, but also need that bolt of inspiration. Like I feel like we all do, and I'm glad to be a part of that. Awesome. And you know what? We are excited to have you. We're excited to meet you in person. We're excited to hear your message. Uh, fired up and to know the purpose. I mean, we're excited to, to work with you. So can you give some words of wisdom? You know, principals are going through a lot right now. Uh, I'm one of them and every day is a different day, but I've never been through a year like I've been through so far this year. And um, words of wisdom for principals now, elementary, middle school, high school, anybody. Yeah. So I would say first and foremost, stay, stay true to who you are. You know, there's so many things right now that you're getting at it from every, every which direction. In my keynote, I'm going to talk about staying personal and authentic in the midst of adversity and recognizing the adversity that we're facing every single day, staying true to who you are, staying true to what you believe and not just kind of blowing in the wind, right? In terms of whatever, whatever parent we're trying to make happy that day, stay true to who you are, even in the face of adversity, because we will get through this. Second piece I would say is you are so busy as principals taking care of everybody else. I I mean, all day long, you're taking care of kids all day long. You're taking care of your staff. You know what we're real guilty of as principals speaking from experience here. Uh, I don't know, taking care of ourselves. Yeah. And many of you go home and you take care of other people. My friend, self-care is not selfish. And I know it's a lot easier to talk about and say, because there's always something else to do. There's always another thing to write up in terms of a, you know, an observation. There's always more things to get back to teachers. There's always parents to get back to, but you've also need to unplug. You need to disconnect. I think the conference is a great way to come get rejuvenated from your colleagues uh, and be able to do that. So I think the self-care piece is, is, uh, is really vital for all of that. And, and finally, I'd say, continue to remind yourself of why we do what we do. I know the feeling of being a principal driving home with tears in my eyes, tears streaming down my face, feeling like maybe I wasn't qualified to make the decision that I had to make, or maybe I totally just goofed something up with my staff. Maybe I've messed up a decision for kids. And, and I know that feeling of, of really struggling um, in a given day. And I'm guessing all of our principals can relate to that in some sense. Nobody handed us the pandemic manual of answers of just how to handle what we need to handle moving forward. And so remember why we do what we do. And I'll remind you the impact that you have each and every day. The analogy I make in personal and authentic that I'll share quickly at the conference is how your fingerprints of impact, each one of your fingerprints are personal, each one are authentic in nature. They really will last on generations to come in your community. And it is so difficult to see that when we're so deep in the weeds and our schedules are so full, but the impact that you make every single day is incredibly vast. And it is such an honor to be able to join you all in December. Yeah. And it's, once again, it's going to be an honor to have you, uh, Thomas Murray. We're, ex we're excited to have you on December 8th and excited for a breakout, excited to have some more deeper conversations as well. I'm sure you and I'll connect on, uh, you'll connect with the other hundreds of principals there at the MEMS annual conference. So um, do you have any, anything else you'd like to add before we start signing off here? Because I want to be uh, cognizant of your time. Um, there was a lot of information there and I appreciate it. But anything else you want to add? Thanks for the work you each do each and every day. You are appreciated and I stand in awe of the work that you lead. Can't awesome. wait to see you in December. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Thomas Murray. Um, I appreciate you. I appreciate uh, you, know, you uh, connecting with MEMSPA, coming to see us up in Traverse City in December. Uh, for everyone watching or listening to this, make sure that you're registering for the MEMSPA annual conference. You can go to memspa.org and just register there. All the information's on that website. So uh, this MEMSPA Minutes video series, once again, posts every Thursday at 8.30 on hashtag MEMSPA chat and also other various social media streams. You can also follow us on the YouTube channel MEMSPA TV. But for myself, Mike Domogowski, uh, proud president of MEMSPA and Thomas Murray here, we're going to sign off. Keep doing the good work, principles leading uh, learning, and we are in it together. Let's do it together. We will see you next week. Thank you so much.